We've all been there at some point. The BVR duel has become within visual range. You and your opponent pass. You yank the stick back into your lap and hold it there, trying to turn as tight as you can. Your airspeed begins to decay rapidly, and your aircraft begins to shudder as it rides the edge of a stall. And, unless your opponent makes the same fundamental mistake, you'll die, because he'll outturn you. What happened? You try to do too much, too soon, and with no understanding of when your aircraft turns best. All you can do is watch helplessly as he pulls his nose into you, and you die. Hello and welcome. The goal of today's mission is a modest one. I'd like to introduce you to three concepts that underlie all basic flight maneuvering. Energy, and how you use it, turn radius, and turn rate. You will learn what they are, how they interrelate, and why patience is a virtue. Anytime you maneuver your aircraft, it costs you energy. And energy is like money. It's always harder to make than to use. That being said, you want to get the most for what you spend. So how do you make the quickest turn with the smallest radius? By being at the right airspeed when you do it. Now you're probably thinking, well, obviously, the slower I go, the tighter I can turn. And you'd be right. That's because of the relationship between velocity or airspeed and turn radius in the equation. You don't need to know the turn radius equation itself. Just remember that in it, velocity is squared. So, if you remember basic algebra, you'll know what that means. A small change in velocity leads to a bigger change in turn radius. You will make a much bigger circle by going a little faster, and, conversely, a much smaller circle by going a little slower. Now, the energy you spend to make the turn, the g's that you pull, also helps. The more g's you pull, the tighter your turn. But, unlike airspeed, g isn't squared. So it helps, but it plays a much smaller role than airspeed does. Let's turn a few circles in the sky. I'd like you to see this in practice. We'll start with a low speed level turn. We'll do a complete 360 degrees at a constant airspeed. After that, I will uh, goose the throttles a bit and we'll pick up speed and you can watch our circle widen. And since variations in G would have some impact, I will hold this to a constant 3.5 G's throughout. Okay, here we go. Okay, holding a steady 3.5 G's. Airspeed around 400 kilometers per hour. If you want, you can watch what's happening on the map as well. Okay, about halfway through the turn. Hey, not bad. Just about where we started from. Okay, I'm goosing the throttles. Picking up airspeed slowly. Still keeping the same level turn. When we get back to our starting point this time, though, you'll notice that we're slightly behind our viewpoint. There you go. Not much of an increase in airspeed, but already the circle is widening, and it'll keep on widening as our, as our airspeed increases. Keep an eye on the G-meter. You'll notice it creeping up and then dropping back to 3.5. You're witnessing the relationship between airspeed and G's available. As our airspeed increases, so do the G's, as long as I'm keeping the stick in the same position. In order to reduce the G's again, I have to release some back pressure on the stick. G's build, I release a little more pressure. And there you go, we're back to our original starting position, except we're well behind our original viewpoint. So our circle has certainly widened. So, as you can tell, you were right. The slower you go, the tighter you turn. But it's not only important how tight you turn, it's also important how quickly you can swing your nose through that turn. Here's an extreme example. If you can turn 180 degrees in a 5-foot radius, but it takes you 60 minutes to do it, I'll still kill you, even though it takes me 1,800 feet to turn, but I can do it in 10 seconds. There is a simple two-word saying, rate kills. What it means is that a fighter with superior turn rate can outmaneuver a fighter with superior turn radius. And it doesn't take much. 
as little as two degrees of turn rate advantage will allow me to eat your lunch. And it's not hard to understand why. If we both turn for 10 seconds, and in each of those seconds I'm turning two degrees faster than you are, at the end of that time I'll be 20 degrees closer to bringing weapons to bear on you than you will be on me. Okay, let's take this a bit further. Remember I said that the energy you spend to make the turn, the G's, is a part of the turn radius equation? Well, it's also a part of the turn rate equation. The more G's you pull, the faster you turn. So pulling maximum G's allows a maximum turn rate. Airspeed still plays a part, but now G is divided by airspeed. If you hold maximum G's, a higher airspeed will cause you to turn slower. And the opposite is true. A lower airspeed will cause you to turn faster. Now, if you've been paying attention, about now you should be saying, wait a minute. Back at the start of all this, you said that it was a fundamental mistake to pull the stick back into my lap because I start going slow and my opponent would be able to outturn me. That's correct. So, let me see if I'm understanding this. First, you get the smallest turn radius at slower speeds. Correct. Second, you get the fastest turn rate at slower speeds. Correct. So, please enlighten me. Why shouldn't I yank the stick into my lap and lose airspeed as fast as I can to go as slow as I can? Because of G. It takes G to turn. No G, no turn. Low G, slow turn. High G, fast turn. You got a hint of this back there when we were turning circles. Remember the G meter kept creeping upwards? as our speed increased, and I had to keep on backing off on the stick, releasing stick pressure, to bring the G's back to three and a half. So, it's all tied to airspeed. That, after all, is where you're getting your G's. At slow speeds, you can turn a tight circle, you just can't do it very quickly. That's because at slow speeds, your wings aren't generating enough lifting force to give you the high G's a quick, tight turn requires. The only possible answer is to go fast enough to generate the energy you need to make the tightest circle fastest. Or, put another way, what's the slowest I can go and still have enough G's to make the quickest, tightest turn? The answer you get is what's known as the aircraft's corner speed, or corner velocity. And this is the speed at which your fighter will perform its best. Okay, I've picked up our airspeed. Let's turn a few more circles. Keep an eye on the G-meter and our airspeed. Even though I have the stick pulled back in my lap at this high airspeed, I can't pull more than about 7 Gs. So right now, we're turning a large circle and doing it rather slowly. Our nose is sweeping the horizon at about 14 degrees per second. Now, watch our Gs start to climb as our airspeed starts to drop. They're creeping up, and so is our turn rate. We're up to about 18 degrees per second. Watch three things. Airspeed, our G's, and our rate. As our airspeed continues to drop, our turn circle is getting tighter, and our turn rate is getting faster. As you watch, there will be a point when our turn rate grows noticeably faster. Here it comes. There. That's our corner speed, about 540 kilometers per hour indicated at our present weight. For a few moments, our nose was sweeping the horizon at about 28 degrees per second, which is huge. And our turn radius was about 350 meters. That translates into, oh, about 1150 feet. Notice I said for a few moments. By definition, your highest G turn at corner speed will give you your highest turn rate. But this turn rate is not sustainable. In fact, it's called your instantaneous turn rate. It's the fastest you can swing your nose through the turn radius for a short period of time. Your aircraft just doesn't develop enough thrust to hold this speed under the highest possible G, at least not until you're about to stall. The result is that if you try to hold the highest Gs possible in order to keep an instantaneous turn rate going, your airspeed will continue to slow. As your speed slows, less Gs become available. And, as the G's drop, your turn rate slows. See where this is going? 
keep the stick in your lap and soon you'll be turning a tight circle, though not as tight as the one you could do at corner speed. And you'll also be doing it more slowly than you would at corner speed. So what can you do? Hold your corner speed, not your G's. Yes, your turn rate will be less than the instantaneous turn rate, but the difference is you can sustain this turn rate. In fact, it's called the sustained turn rate. And there's an added benefit to flying your corner speed rather than the G's. Whenever you're at corner speed or just above it, your instantaneous turn rate is always available. If you need to rake your nose those few extra degrees per second to get your weapons on target, they're there for you to use. So how does this all work in a fight? Your first turn is the most important. Assuming you're going fast, pull the stick smoothly back and load maximum G's on the airframe while reducing your airspeed toward corner speed. Your turn rate will continue to increase and your turn radius will continue to get rapidly smaller. As you approach your corner speed, ease off on the stick and reduce your G's to hold your corner speed. In thinking about all this, hopefully you will realize that energy management is vitally important. Not only do you have to maneuver your aircraft in relationship to the enemy, but you also have to maneuver in a manner that maximizes your G availability. G availability, after all, gives you maneuverability, and flying close to corner speed maximizes that maneuverability. But you have to do all that while fighting an enemy who is maneuvering and attempting to do the same. I guarantee that you will not be flying the flat circles we've been flying during this demonstration. Remember the fight that started this tutorial? Well, let's fly it again, but this time, let's do it right. Fight's on! Stick smoothly pulled back into my lap to load on the G's. He's diving, dropping my nose below the horizon to keep our speed up so that we don't, it doesn't decay too rapidly. Our turn is tightened, our rate is increased. Flying our corner speed, we're inside a circle, and... This time, it's us doing the killing. Boom. Short, vicious, and oh, so sweet. Scratch one. Okay, let's take another look. We have more fuel this time, so my corner speed will be up around the high 6, low 700 range. Stick full back, loading on the G's. We start at 800, dropping my nose below the horizon to convert altitude to energy so our speed doesn't decay too rapidly, and we can keep that corner. High 600. And, as you can tell, we've outturned them. In the flanker, you will get your best turn rates and turn radii in the speed range from about 710 km per hour to about 520 km per hour. In the F-15, the same would be true at about 430 to 330 knots indicated. Think of this as your power band, and every aircraft has one. If you are heavy, you will turn best towards the high end of that range. If light, the low end. That's because of the role that weight plays in the equations. The heavier you are, the higher your corner speed will be. To end this tutorial, let me repeat. You will get both your best turn rate and best turn radius at corner speed. But in any fight, you will never be able to simply fly your corner speed. You will be climbing and diving and maneuvering, as will your opponent. Think of it as a game of aerial chess. But underlying every move you make will be the available G's, airspeed, and their interaction. Lose sight of that or fall further behind the energy curve than your opponent, and you'll die. That concludes this tutorial. Thank you. You have control.